In this tutorial we're going to be looking at numerical integration techniques. Now numeric integration can be used when we want to approximate the area under a curve. We may want to do that for a number of reasons but if a function is too complex to integrate then we can always use these techniques to come up with an approximation of the integral. Now as with integration what we're doing is we're finding the area under a curve between set limits and in this tutorial we're going to be looking at some techniques to approximate the value of this integral between the boundaries of x equals 0 and x equals 8. So the full area underneath the function that we see on the screen. Now the function that we're working with is y equals a third x cubed minus 4x squared plus 12x plus 5 as we see in the top left hand corner and then we have the function displayed on the graph on the right hand side. Now the first technique we're going to use is called the mid-ordinate rule. And we're going to use the mid-ordinate rule, first of all, with a step size of 2, and then with a step size of 1. And I'll just explain that as we go along. The first thing that we do for the mid-ordinate rule, if we were going to use a step size of 2, is we would want to split the area under this integral into columns of width 2. So one column will run between 0 and 2, the next column will run between 2 and 4, the next column will run between 4 and 6, and the last column will run between 6 and 8. And when we do the mid-ordinate rule, we take the y value at the centre of that column. So for that first column there, we would be taking the y value at x equals 1. And that would produce an area of a known width and a known height as so. And once again, with the mid-ordinate rule for the second column, we would take the value of y at the centre of the column. So the value of y at 3 and we would produce an area of a known width and a known height. And we'd repeat that process. So for the third column, we would take the value of the function at x equals 5, produce a column of a known area, and then finally, for the fourth column, we would do the same. We would find the value of the function when x equals 7. We would produce a column of that height and width 2, and there we have four areas which roughly approximate the area underneath the function. So what we would be doing is calculating the area of each of these boxes and once we've calculated those areas we can then add them together. We'll do that first of all and then we'll return to this view and we'll look at how changing the column width to 1 affects the approximation. Okay so already on the screen we have our function on the top left hand side and directly below that we have a table of values for x and y that will correspond to that function. We also have in black our general formula for the mid-ordinate rule, where h is the step size. And if you recall, first of all, we're going to be looking at a step size of 2. And inside the bracket we have y0.5 plus y1.5 all the way up to y to the n minus 0.5. And those are our mid-ordinate values. Which are the values of y at the centre of each of those columns. Now if you recall from the previous view, we need to find the value of y when x equals 1 for the middle of our first column. We need to find the value of y when x equals 3, when x equals 5 and when x equals 7. Because each of our bands, our first band runs from 0 to 2, our next band runs between 2 and 4, our third band runs between 4 and 6, and our final band runs between 6 and 8, because we're evaluating the integral between 0 and 8. So, first of all, let's find our values of y when x equals 1, 3, 5 and 7. Well, when x equals 1, we have a third times 1 cubed, minus 4 times 1 squared, plus 12 times 1, plus 5. All we're doing is we're inputting x as 1 into our formula at the top there, replacing each of those x's with the value of 1. Now when we run that through our calculators, we get a y value of 13.3 recurring. Next, when x equals 3, we'll get a third times 3 cubed minus 4 times 3 squared plus 12 times 3 plus 5, which gives us 14. When x equals 5, we get 
y equal to 6.6 .6 recurring. And when x equals 7, we get y equal to 7.3 recurring. So we've already established that we have a step size equal to 2. And we know that our mid-ordinate values are 13.3 recurring and 14 plus 6.6 .6 recurring plus 7.3 recurring. Now when we run that through our calculators, we get an I value, an approximation of the integral equal to 82.66. To two decimal places. So this time we're going to repeat the mid ordinate rule, except this time we're going to use a step size of 1 instead of 2. We're still approximating the integral between x equals 0 and x equals 8, but except this time our columns are going to have a, a width of 1. So the first column runs from 0 to 1, the second from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and so on, all the way up to 8. Now this time, when we implement the mid-ordinate rule, we're going to need to know the value of y when x equals a half, because that will be the center of that first column. The width this time is going to be 1 instead of 2. We're then going to need to know the value of y when x equals 1 and a half, and that will give us the area of our second column. Then when x equals 2 and a half, and so on, all the way to the end of the function. What we can see is that these columns fit much more closely against that line. So what we would expect when we approximate the integral with a narrower step size, we would expect the result to be more accurate. So let's do that now, approximating the integral using the mid-ordinate rule and a step size of one. So this time then, we have a step size of one and our mid-ordinate values are going to be the values of y when x equals a half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, all the way up to seven and a half. Now we know this to be true because we have y values when x equals a half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, all the way up to n minus a half. Well, n in this case is eight because eight is our upper limit. Eight minus a half is seven and a half, which down in the bottom left-hand corner is the final mid-ordinate value. So we're going to go through the same process, plugging values of x into the function, so x equals a half, and determine the mid-ordinate value of y, x equals one and a half, and determine the value of y, and so on, all the way down to x equals 7.5. So when x equals a half, we have a third, times a half cubed, minus four times a half squared, plus 12 times a half, plus 5, which gives us a y value of 10.04 to two decimal places. When x equals 1.5, that gives us a y value of 15.13 to two decimal places. And we're going to continue this down to the value when x equals 7.5. Okay, now that we've calculated those values, we can calculate our approximation of the integral because the integral equals the step size. This time our step size is one times y of a half, 10.04 plus y of 1.5, 15.13 plus y of 2.5, 15.21 plus y of 3.5, 12.29, plus y of 4.5, 8.38, plus y of 5.5, 5.46, plus y of 6.5, 5.54, plus y of 7.5, 10.63, and evaluating all of that, we get an approximation of the integral equal to 82.68. Now hopefully you recall when we used a step size of 2, we got a value of the integral equal to 82.66.
So what we see is that the area under the curve using both approximations are very close, but what we'll need to assume is that this one is closer to the actual value as we've used a smaller step size. And we'll actually validate the assumption that a smaller step size gives a more accurate result in a later video on the numeric integration topic.